appreciate that. And um, it just now occurred to me, no one has clapped for me in months. I <laughs> walk in the house, kids don't clap. They're like, we're bored. Um, hey, maybe I'll leave my money to you guys instead. <laughs> Now you're hoping for my death. Uh, <laughs> I was off for a couple months. Uh, hopefully you noticed, but it's good to be back in this disgusting building next to a burned out Baja Fresh. <laughs> was it Guillermo? How was it without me here? Oh, we miss you a lot, Jimmy. You did? All right. Yeah. You know, my son, Kevin, got married this weekend. Uh, up in Idaho <laughs> to his uh, wife, Nicole. Guillermo was there. Guillermo was there. Cleto was there. It was quite an event, huh? Guillermo was the flower girl. It was. <laughs> Adorable. Rarely do you see a flower girl knock off half a bottle of Don Julio, but he did. <laughs> you know, there, I tell you, there are a lot of things when you're not on the air that you see that make you wish you were. And one of them, the owner of the Lakers, Jeannie Buss, was on our show with Jesus Nice, who was filling in for me. And um, uh, the result of that was this reaction from America's second most dangerous golfer. Hey, Twitter world, it's me, yours truly. Well, I woke up this morning and I had all kind of messages. Uh, Talking about some story that uh, Jeannie Buss, uh, owner of the Lakers, told last night on, I guess, Jimmy Kendall or somewhere. <laughs> Kendall? Jimmy Kendall? It's... Come on. <laughs> OJ thinks I'm an e-reader. <laughs> I guess I should be happy he doesn't know my name. It's less likely they'll be able to find me. But And if that wasn't enough, I got another shout out from uh, that guy who had that press conference next to the dildo shop. The last time you were on, uh, Jimmy Kimmel um, kind of lampooned us on his uh, late night Good. show. I'm sure it wasn't funny because he's not funny, but I mean. <laughs> he called you, know. you uh, Recount Dracula, was his nickname. Well, that's you. very funny. Late night stuff. He's a real comedian. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, how about Count Druncula then? You like that better? That's good, right? You know, I have to say, I was. I had a plan. I was going to show you slides of my summer vacation, but I went through them. It's mostly pictures of me holding trout, trying to fix the uh, defective generator on my Winnebago. So instead, I thought it would be fun to take a look at how Donald Trump spent his summer vacation. So Guillermo, if you would, bring the, uh, yeah, there it is. All right. Very good. We got a old fashioned slide projector. Thank you, Guillermo, here. That thing plugged in? All right. Yes. Yeah, right. um, all right. Start on June 3rd, Donald Trump departed Mar-a-Lago for his other golf course slash catering hall slash crime, crime lair, Trump National Golf Club in New Jersey, where he watched his former aide, Cassidy Hutchison, testify against him. She said, among other things, he physically attacked one of his own Secret Service agents and threw his lunch at the wall, smearing ketchup all over the presidential dining room. But that happy memory sadly would not last, as on July 14th, Trump lost his beloved ex-wife, Ivana, and buried her at his golf course right near the first hole, which was also his nickname for her. Um, July 29th, Trump hosted the Saudi-backed uh, Live Golf Tournament, where he flattered his despicable guests by saying he wasn't sure who was responsible for 9-11, but definitely wasn't them. Then, 10 days later, on August 8th, we got a look at photographic evidence showing Trump did, in fact, tear up official White House documents and flushed them down the official White House toilet. And that same day, the FBI searched Mar-a-Lago and found an all-you-can-read classified documents bar uh, featuring hundreds of pages of top-secret government intel and a box of framed covers of Time magazine with his face on them, because you can't have security without insecurity. Two days later, Trump gave a deposition to the New York Attorney General, pleading the fifth more than 440 times, which is what all not guilty people do. And then finally, this weekend, Trump ended his summer at a rally for the soon to be unemployed Senate hopeful and penis pill pusher, Dr. Oz. And that was the totally not bummer summer of Donald Trump. Thank you, Guillermo. Wow, it was quite a summer, wasn't it? I to say, what happened this summer? Women lost the right to choose, monkeypox spread, and Batgirl was canceled. I'll never go away again, I promise. <laughs> Trump right now, speaking of going away, Trump is in serious legal trouble. This tells you all you need to know. Donald Trump versus the United States of America. 
That's a, and he'll probably win again. I, you know, I've been trying to understand how he could possibly believe he had the right to take all those documents to his house. It's weird that a person who barely reads would even want documents. It's like <laughs> finding out your dog collects stamps. It's, but Trump keeps claiming he declassified the documents, which first of all, no, he didn't. But second of all, even if he had, which he didn't, that's even more crazy. That's like finding your wife in bed with another guy. She's like, it's okay, I took my ring off first. It's <laughs> what it amounts to, right? Mara Lardo did score a victory yesterday. A judge that he appointed granted his request to assign a special master to review the documents and put the investigation on hold. Who the special master will be, we do not know. Maybe they can get Eric to do it. He's special, right? He's... <laughs> In Pennsylvania over the weekend, Trump explained to the MAGA faithful that this just isn't just about him stealing documents. This is about them stealing documents, too. It was not just my home that was raided last month. It was the hopes and dreams of every citizen who I've been fighting for since the moment I came down the golden escalator. That's right. <laughs> it's about all of our golden escalators. <laughs> they rifled through the first lady's closet drawers and everything else, and even did a deep and ugly search of the room of my 16-year-old son leaving everything they touched in far different condition than it was when they started. Poor Baron must have been freaking out. Imagine being a 16-year-old, the FBI goes through your bedroom. <laughs> Good thing they don't have Playboy anymore. And um, one fact that is not in dispute is that Donald Trump had highly classified information sitting in a box on the floor of his golf resort. And there's only one way to handle someone who does something like that. This was not just extreme carelessness with classified material, which is still totally disqualifying. This is calculated, deliberate, premeditated misconduct, followed by a cover-up. What he did is illegal. It's classified information. He broke the law. Very simple. I mean, uh, as much as it's going to be broken, this is highly classified. That's the highest stage. It's highly classified information. Many of them were classified, highly classified, and you go to jail for that. And you go to jail for that. And you should have known that. You go to jail for that. Classified information, you should go to jail for that for many, many years. Give the people what they want already. <laughs> Meanwhile, um, Russia, Russia, Russia. Trump's pal Putin has issued a new travel ban for 25 Americans are banned for life, including the Secretary of Commerce, six U.S. Senators, and Ben Siller and Sean Penn <laughs> are not allowed. Funny, every Russian we sanction is some sweaty, evil oligarch who owns a, who dumps poison in the ocean or something. Russia turns around and bans Zoolander. <laughs> we will never meet the Fockers. <laughs> Yet. That, that was my Russian accent. <laughs> Very good. Good job. <laughs> By the way, before we press on, I want to acknowledge our guest host this summer. I've, I was lucky to have some fantastic people filling in for me. And uh, it's always comforting to be reminded that literally dozens of people can do your job with no training whatsoever. <laughs> so I want to say thanks to Sean Hayes, Chelsea Handler, Anthony Anderson, Mark Rober, Dana Carvey, Kerry Washington, RuPaul, Rob McElhenney, David Allen Greer, Jesus Nice, Al Franken, Nicole Byer, Lamorne Morris, Seem Liu, Nikki Glazer, and Donald Trump Jr. Almost all of you were great. <laughs> and um, almost all of you were kind enough to leave um, a message in our Summer Guest Host Yearbook for 2022. Hey, 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 hey. Jimmy, hosting your show was such a terrific honor. I'm so glad we met all those years ago in the bathroom line at the Emmys right before you ruined the evening with your explosive diarrhea. Hey, Jimmy Cans. It was so much fun hosting your show out of drag. Masculinity may be a prison, but men's warehouse is a paradise. Can I get an amen? Smooches RuPaul. Dear Jimmy, thanks for letting me guest host your show. Whenever you want to fill in for me on my YouTube channel, just let me know. I'll, like, tell him you're my grandpa. Sincerely, Marky Mark. 
Jimmy, first I have to host your show for you, and now I have to write a message in your yearbook? You are one needy little bitch. What's next? You want me to raise your kids for you? Carrie. Anthony, uh, there you are. I need you to come and help me clean my toilet. Can I do my line to give you your cue so you can come in? Can I do my, I got a whole bunch of I'm supposed to say first, mama. He said, yeah. Hi, Jimmy. Taking an entire summer off to do hypnotherapy seems drastic, but adult bedwetting is a serious issue. You and your bladder are in my prayers. Stay dry, Chelsea. Jay Gillum, it's hard to point out my favorite moment of hosting your show, but it was probably when I burned all the Mets caps you left around in the office. The Yankees for life, 27 rings. See, Jesus. Hi, Jimmers. I had a great time hosting your show and an even better time teaching Guillermo how to talk with a Philly accent. You guys want a Philly Tuesday sandwich? <laughs> Just like we practiced. Love, Rob. Hi, Jimmy. Loved doing your show. Loved working with your staff. They don't like you. Hey, Jimmy. Hosting this show was so much fun, mostly because it gave me an excuse to get away from my mama for a few hours. Hey. Mama, walk in on mama. I'll talk. Walk you did not. It's only three words after I say mama. For a few hours. Boom, as soon as I say for a few hours, you own it with your line. I don't take that long to walk to you. Mama, yes. Hey, JK, I hope you had a wonderful vacation. Or as my therapist calls it, running away from your problems. Good luck sorting out your man. No more. Hiya, Jim. Uh, I gotta tell you, I had a great time um, hosting, but a little problem. I started doing Carson and got stuck. I'm living in a prison of uh, slippery monkeys and unfiltered palm malls with Zsa, Zsa Gabor at the Tonga Hut. Tamiroquai, hosting your show is a dream. Not my dream, but I mean, it's probably someone's dream. Big J! Even though I only hosted for two days, I had all my mail forwarded to the studio, so if one of the other guest hosts gets a box from Russia marked not sex toys, <laughs> that's for me. Thanks, Nicole. Hi, Jimmers. Instead of telling you my feelings about guest hosting your show, I'm gonna sing them. I was underpaid. <laughs> Stay cool, buddy. All right, Jimmy, I hosted your show. Now please hold up your end of the bargain and let my parents go. <laughs> Sick son of a bitch. <laughs> Dear Jimmy, Hosting the show was so much fun, mostly because it gave me an excuse to get away from my mama for a few hours. Hey. Oh, <laughs> as soon as I say few hours, you jump on your line. You didn't jump on your line. I didn't, I didn't pause the last time. Jump on your line. Oh, there you are. I need your help to clean the out the toilet. OK. Can I say <laughs> Yes, mama. <laughs> Who put her in this scene? Shut up. Okay, that's it, number one. You're doing fine.